Friends, we are starting a new study today that we're calling Roots and Anchors. We're going to be lifting up some questions together around uh, the, the rituals, the traditions that, that nourish us and sustain us, uh, those practices that help us to hold our center, while also asking questions about mm, the mindsets, the habits that might sort of hold us back from the kind of growth and change that God desires uh, from us as well. Roots and anchors. We will, we will hold those questions up to the light of Scripture. We'll seek the Spirit's guidance as we wrestle with those. Seek a sense of how God might be calling us to engage those questions together as Christian community. Roots and anchors. And we're not going to get too far today into the, the theological unpacking of those questions because we have two gifts for you today. Uh, number one, we have a video that we're going to be showing you. Uh, with today being All Saints Sunday, uh, Heath and, and Carol McCann have prepared a video. Carol got out and interviewed some of our living saints here at First Christian Church, and then Heath took those and, and edited those together into a beautiful video. And uh, we were going to use that at the 150th celebration a couple weeks ago, but we thought, you know, with time limitations that week, and also with the fact that today is All Saints Sunday, that it might be really special to share in that today. And in fact, I, I do think that the video is a magnificent testament to some of the roots that nourish us here at First Christian Church. So that's gift one. Gift two is the fact that because that video is going to be given the bulk of the sermon time, I'm not. <laughs> this, yay, yeah, woo! This is the shortest sermon you will ever hear me preach. And Danny's not even here today, Mike. What a waste. What a waste. He's never going to believe it. All right. I would, though, like just a couple of minutes before we, before we watch this video uh, to sort of tee this up for you. And to do that, I'd like to, to read a brief passage that I love from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 2. I'll begin here in verse 4. Ephesians 2, beginning in verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Wow, we have all of these, these blessings, church, these immeasurable riches, the abundance of life and the ultimate promise of salvation. And then what I really want to call your attention to today is the words of verses 8 and 9. For by grace... You have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what He has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the Word of God for the people of God, and together we say, thanks be to God. Riches these blessings, this gift of abundant life. And what, is, what does Paul tell us? Not our doing. Not our doing. I went to a training recently. We were talking about privilege in this training. And, and the trainer said, now, you know, if, if you earn it, it's not privilege. Okay, that's fine. That, that's, that's all fine and good. Except what? Except that we think we've earned everything. Right? Justin wants to say, well, you know, I've worked really hard to get to where I am in this life. I have. I have. You know, I've gone to college and studied hard and gone to seminary and studied hard and, and worked my way through the ordination process. I think I've continued to work hard here. So, yeah. What's the next word, Pam? And, <laughs> mm, you know, I had, had parents who read to me every morning. When I was a child, got to hear my daddy preach. I had a lot of good 
Sunday school teachers who planted seeds of faith, read scripture to me, right? I'd probably still be working the ordination process if Carol Farrell hadn't walked behind me like this, you know, <laughs> kicking me along through that entire process. We want to say, oh, look at this amazing church we've built. Mm, eh, built? Inherited? Stewarded, yes, stewarded. But there were a lot of people that were working real hard here with a lot of faith for a long time before us. Didn't even have air conditioning and running water. Working hard out here on the frontier, planting seeds of faith, making it possible for us to sit together in this comfortable place and worship together today. Mm, here's the biggest one of all, y'all. Oh, Oh, I've, I've been and done really good things. I've earned my place in heaven. What did Paul say? For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Here's a, here's a controversial statement. Self-reliant. We talk a lot about self-reliance. Self-reliance is a myth. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in personal accountability. I believe in personal responsibility. I believe in hard work. Okay? But as Christians, who do we rely on? Ourselves? We rely on God, made known to us in Christ Jesus expressed through Christian community. We rely on each other in the name of Jesus. We rely on the Holy Spirit who continues to work and move and bless us in this life. Friends, it would be, it would be impossible to overstate the extent to which all of us and our faith is the product of the work, the hard work the love, the faith of so many who have come before us and made a way for us in the faith. Grandparents, parents, teachers, Sunday school teachers, mentors, all of these people who have invested in us, planted seeds of faith in us. The founders of this congregation, the apostles of your, the Galilean. The Galilean. And if we walk through life without recognizing it, if we walk through life leaning too much on, on ourselves and our strength, we, we miss, we miss the opportunity to be grateful for all that we have received. Ah, to, to celebrate with gratitude the grace of God in Jesus Christ. And friends, a life, a life in gratitude is the best life that there is. And so, in celebration of that, I would invite you to enjoy this video today. The memories, the testimonies of some of our living saints. You'll hear a lot of names here, a lot of stories. You, you may, if you've been around here for some time, remember some of those people, uh, some of these stories. If you're newer here, you may not, but guess what? You know these people because you have these people too. People that have stepped out, planted in faith in your life. As we watch, may we remember, may we celebrate with gratitude the gift of those that have come before us in the faith. You know, in the first children's sermon, I heard him preach, and he did one every Sunday. With the first, I guess it was the first Sunday we were there, he brought a mesquite, a, a mesquite sapling to show. Here's this little sapling, and then there was the taproot. Well, there was about like this, but right. <laughs> anyway, the point was, 
So, I don't know. Foundation. You've got to have a really good and foundation. My skate trees sometimes have root systems ten times deeper than the tree that I bug. And how important it is for us to have That's really nice to survive everything. <laughs> In the early days of the formation of our congregation, the founding, fam fam founding families were Dr. Morgan, Dr. Lancaster, Doc, Doc Hannaford, the pharmacist, and um, Dr. Dabney. Other names included the Archers, the Thorpes, the Stallcups, the Aikens, and even the Ashley Crockett family, grandson of Davy Crockett. At that time, Addison and Randolph Clark had come out to Thorpe Spring to start the Adran Male and Female College. They joined the church and became the early preachers of our congregation. An interesting fact is that descendants of those early families are still worshiping members 150 years later, and that includes the family of Jane Nett Mitchell and Susan Mitchell May. Susan, how long have you been a member of First Christian Church? Well, I'm 53. Okay. So that so long. You were born and raised here. Yes, okay. yes. Well, would you tell me, uh, thinking about the early years in First Christian, what do you remember the most with gratitude? Uh, just the complete sense of community. Um, it was very small, so it, you always knew who was going to be there, who was not going to be there, if they were going to be out of town, if anybody, you knew everything about everyone, and they knew everything about us. I grew up in the little white church that was just off of the square. And so, you know, it was so, we were, we, we, we felt completely at home in all parts of that church. My mom always sang in the choir. So we were usually up there on Wednesday nights for uh, choir practice. And we felt like we just had the run of the place all the time. I say we with my sister, Sandra. Um, but it was so wonderful because everybody within the church took an active part in raising us. And so, you know, it, it, when we walked in, it was like walking in to your grandmother or grandfather's house. Everybody was happy to see you. Everybody was excited you were there. And it just always made it feel like home. Wonderful. It was wonderful. Who are some of the people that stand out in your mind as being saints? Oh. Um, who had uh, the biggest impact on you? Okay, so there, I, I thought about this. I, uh, I, and... Without a doubt, uh, Roy, B, Roy and Ruby Giles. Um, he, Roy would always, every time we came into the sanctuary, he would pick us up and throw us in the air. And so that was always something you looked forward to when you came to church. Um, Jack and Jane Copeland, um, and then Charlie and Ann uh, were all big, huge parts of our lives. You know, like I said, they were the grandparents that were always there. They were the, the ones that, that made you feel so special so important, you know, all, they were there. I mean, they were there for all of the big life moments. And even though we weren't related, they were always family. Those names came up yesterday. Oh, and of course, because yeah, with the Morgans. Sure I mean, will. like I said, the saint wise, the people who just seemed larger than life. But then like I, I told you before, um, Roger and Patsy Morgan, I, I grew up with them both. We lived in the same neighborhood, but I grew up with their boys. David and Greg are like brothers to me. Um, like I said, we were the youth. I mean, if, if we weren't in town and the Morgans weren't in town, you might as well probably not have Sunday school because there weren't going to be any kids. <laughs> it was quite a church. We'd come from one in Breckenridge. It was a big church, but this was a very small church. Yeah. And there were maybe 14, 15 people there. Our, our family made a total of 18 in the church that time. And That's so, the four of us. you know, I don't know. I feel so grateful that somehow they got word, maybe from our church in Breckenridge, to someone here, because we didn't have a full time minister. But somehow she found us, and I don't know how. And uh, of course, Who we was would. The he, he was, I cannot think of his, he wasn't a permanent minister. He came only on Sundays. And if there was some special occasion, I, he did too. But when we walked in, that was the most welcoming, you know, 15, 16, 17 people there. Uh, there were Jane, Jane's two kids and, uh, and some others from that, that she took to church 
that didn't really, uh, I don't think the families belonged to the church, but they just, kids came with her. So there were some kids that our kids could, you know, be with. And the rest were kind of, you know, kind of uh, quite in, in their maybe retirement years, I would say. <laughs> I tell you what's interesting. Although it was a very small church, and and the uh, sanctuary you was had a sanctuary in a one room on the back of the sanctuary, and that was the whole church complex. That was it. That was it. And yet we had uh, dinners there in the in that one big room. Uh, we did some interesting things. We had uh, we went out to. Uh, Thorpe Springs. Thorpe Springs and celebrated. It was some kind of event because remember TCU, uh, yeah, at, yeah, right, at Redden College. And so we dressed up in old time costumes. I can't find a picture of that. I haven't been able to find a picture of that yet. But we had old time costumes on. And I played the uh, an organ, a pump organ. They brought me a pump organ out there and I played that. Because when we moved first here and we went to this church, Jane was playing the piano. And when she found out that I could play the piano, she begged me to take over it because she, she didn't feel like she was very good. And I said, well, well, you know, we'll see. And so I did. And, uh, and eventually Jane and her, Jane's uh, grandmother raised her. They donated a, uh, or bought a, uh, an electric organ. And so I played that. And uh, so I did that until I started, my kids, my youngest was in school, and then I started to teach. And so after that, I had limited time <laughs> teaching elementary school <laughs> and raising kids. <laughs> um, there, it, when we first went, we were, felt very comfortable because it's, it's like family. Yeah. It's small, well, maybe at 18 would be a large family, but it really was very comfortable. But it started to grow. Yeah. I mean, more people came to Granbury, and and the uh, when they when they found when they came to that little church, I don't know what the impression was, <clears throat> but the first impression we got was it was just like a family. Mm -hmm. uh, Ann and Jack Pinkard used to, if, if Roger was helping with an offering or something and I was at the organ, then uh, oftentimes Ann Pinkard and, and uh, her husband babysat our kids in the pews. And, uh, and so it was just, you know, and one, one day one of my kids <laughs> dropped a... Well, I don't think he dropped it. Oh. I think they... They had marbles, I, I, and they delighted in rolling those. The, and it was the, it was a wooden floor, all wooden wood floor, floor. <laughs> and everything every time it hit the board, it would go pop, pop, <laughs> all the way down. And I was playing the organ, and I looked around, and I gave him a look <sighs> that mothers can only do. But anyway, and it amused everybody around that I wasn't too amused, uh, but they were. <laughs> The main reason we we decided we had to build a new building, we had no place to park where that little church was. There was no there, there were any black places, no place we we couldn't even park in front of the church or beside the church because it was so dense there. So across the street was the Granberry Medical Clinic. And they were closed on the Sunday, so we got to park in their parking lot. Then they built a new building and moved out, and they sold it. We couldn't park there anymore. So that was a impetus for us to build a new building because we had we had two services already. Every Sunday morning we had about forty. Or we had about forty in each service then back then. Wow, what year was this? Well, we, we, we moved in here in 86, so we had been here five years when we moved in. Uh, Jimmy Walker was really, he's intelligent, but he also was aggressive, trying to build or 
expand. And he got Jack Copeland to look for land. And Jack knew a lot of people, so we got this land cheap. And Jack's money kept it going during the time that we had troubles. Without him, that would have never happened. And Pinkard's the same thing. Multi millions of dollars came from the two of them. You may have been a friend to a lot of people here. And I think a lot of people would probably hold Travis Duncan up as one of the saints. Well, I've had the picture here of some of these people. Uh, well, we talked about Renee Baker. And here's uh, Jerry, Jerry uh, 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 Jane Hyden. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that uh, I really ought to know better. Of course, yeah. our librarian here, and then Bob Martin, his family were good people, and he, uh, he's that's not, his son, Kenny. Kenny and Kathy. Martin. Yeah. Well, his dad. Kenny is, uh, he has done an uh, exceptional job here taking care of the facility. Yes. And uh, Matt Farland here, he was a teacher from Arkansas. Is that right? And uh, he worked in the kitchen, or the. Yeah, he worked in the kitchen. Dining room. A long time. So, yeah, I'd say he would be one of the saints, of course. And then, uh, well, there was a woman to hear that uh, her husband came by the house and got some fish to go in a pond from to his house. I don't remember his name. Oh, this guy here is... Dan Kerr? Yeah, he's... He's one of the good guys, isn't he? He's one of the better guys, and I liked his Sunday school class, too. So with him and Jim Oglesby, they, they were very, very good people for teaching classes. So that's... I'd say they were saints in the church. Bob Hedman, Donna Barnes, Dr. Coleman, and Daryl Lilla. Uh, Daryl Lilla did all the stained glass in the sanctuary, and Larry helped him get the windows in. And so every time I look at the windows, I think of Daryl and Larry. Yeah. So uh, Bob Hedman being the head coach and just being a great guy, and just a fun, fun loving guy. And Donna Barnes, donated the handbells I found out that I love playing. So, and I'm hoping we get the bell choir back real soon. And Dr. Coleman is just, just a wonderful guy. And uh, he just does so much for this church unnoticed, you know, and he doesn't want a big deal out of it, but uh, he's just the kindest, gentlest man I know. You don't have to be big to be, I know we want to bring as many people as we can, but I loved that church. Yeah. It was just like a big hug pretty much every time you went there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really was. Don't find that much you can't anymore. find no. that. And I grew up in the Disciple of Christ Church in Stanford, Texas. That was, it was, wasn't big, but it wasn't as little as this one was. No. But it had the same feeling. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the only only thing that when you get too big, you you can't be close with everybody like we could in those yeah. days. <laughs>